Hello, this is Miss Weeks. I'm a kindergarten or first grade teacher this year in um, Faith Formation. And I wanted to try to read you one of my favorite Lint books, The Proud Tree. He was the strongest and sturdiest tree in the whole forest. Oh, but he was proud, too proud. I'm the greatest, he would boss. I'm as strong and steady as a woman soldier, as brave as a centurion. All the other trees grew tired of his constant bragging. They named him Wex, which means king, because he always acted and talked as if he were the king tree of all the forest. Every morning at dawn and every evening at sunset, the trees of the forest would rise their branches in pride, praise and thank, thanks to God, the creator, but not wax. Rex was usually too busy admiring his own green, leafy branches, glistening in the morning sun or waving in the evening breeze. One day, some Roman soldiers from Jerusalem came riding through the forest. As they passed each tree, they would stop and look the tree over carefully. Then they would shake their heads and move on. They came to a they came to stop right in front of Rex. Rex straightened his trunk and waved his proud full branches in the breeze. The leaders of the soldiers climbed down from his horse and walked around Rex. He nodded his head and smiled. This tree will be perfect for the king, he said. The king, Wax wondered, what king? And why are they laughing? The soldiers circled Wax, feeling his rough bark, measuring his height, and nodding their head. The most, I must be the greatest tree in the forest for them to choose me for the king. Wex said out loud. I hope all these other trees are watching and listening. He glanced around, smiling proudly. Maybe the king wants me beautiful branches for shade after his long trip from Rome, he thought. Or maybe he is going to plant me in his palace garden for all his subjects to admire. Wes could almost see him in the wool garden and where and colorful birds nested in his treetop branches. Wex was excited. They, the very thought of being the king's tree made him tremble all over. But no, it was not for excitement. That Rex was trembling. It was the soldiers. What are they doing to him? Rex could feel the powerful blows of the soldiers' axes against his trunk. Rack, rack, went the axe. Oh no, they were cutting him down. Wet screamed, don't, you can't do this to me. I will die if you cut me down. Don't you know who I am? I'm Wex, the king tree of all the forest. Stop that immediately. He was too late. With a great thundering sigh and a loud thump, Wex came crashing to the ground. His lovely branches were 
spread spread out on the forest floor they would never wave in the breeze again he had been cut away forever from the root that gave him life no tree can live long without his roots rex could be dead in three days The soldiers cut Rex's, Rex's trunk in two parts. A pole, a short pole cut from his top was laid beside him. They stripped away his branches and leaves and trimmed off his bark. Rex felt naked and very, very angry. How dare they treat me this way? The next thing Rex knew, both parts of his trunk were being carried, chained to the soldier's horse. Then drag, they dragged him over bumps and rocks through cracks all the way to Jerusalem. When they finally came to a stop, they were in, short, in some sort of courtyard. Workmen came along then and cut notches in each part of rex's trunk they fitted them together and tied them firmly in place well thought rex at least i'm all in one piece again rex looked up at the sun the sun was high in the sky rex knew it was late morning hey I can see my shadow of the on the courtyard wall. Just look at that. They have shaped me into some kind of sign. A great surprise for the king, I bet. Rex knew that something very special was about to happen. He could feel it in his trunk. Though the open courtyard ga gates Rex could see people lining up along the side of the road. This must be a very important event. And just think, I'm to be part of it. It's too too bad the other trees can't see me now. Boy, would they be jealous. Rex was almost glowing with pride. By now, he knew, kept wondering when the king would come. Suddenly, there was a great commotion in the courtyard. A man wearing a crown of spiked thorns were being pushed rough, roughly into the yard by the soldiers, blood trickling down the fa man's face and into the long hair. He had whipped marks all over his body. Rex wondered what this man could possibly have done that would make people treat him so badly. He looked so weak and beaten, Rex thought. Yet there is a, a regal look on his face, as if he were a king. Or no, this couldn't be the king the soldiers were talking about. It couldn't be who would treat a king like this. The soldiers were leaning the man over to Rex. They grabbed Rex's trunk and laid it across the bleeding back of the man with the crown of thorns. Rex felt himself being lifted gently, almost lovely. Slowly the man began to carry Rex. They walked out of the courtyard, right down the street, lined with people. They headed towards a hill in the distance. It seemed such a long way for to Rex. All along the road, as Rex and the man passed by, people were watching. Some shouted angry words at them. Some laughed. Some were crying. Others just watched sadly without a word. Three times the man fell before the soldiers finally grabbed someone from the crowd to help him. Well, it's about time, muttered Rex. It 
took two horses to get me here and they expect this man to carry me all the way up this hill alone <clears throat> at the top of the hill there were two other trees shaped just like wax laid the cross down here a soldier growled he turned to the other soldiers standing around this cross is to be go in the middle cross thought wax in surprise so that's what they made of me this is a strange ceremony but i'm going to be in the middle that means i'm the star attraction <clears throat> The tree has so much pride still. All the people who had lined the roads were beginning to gather at the top of the hill. The soldiers were tying off, tearing off the clothes of the man with the crown. The people were screaming at him. Suddenly, Wax felt more frightened than he had ever felt before. This is it a very nice ceremony, he thought. I'm beginning to wish I were not part of it. The man with the crown of thorns was on his knees beside Rex. I've never seen eyes like this man's, Rex thought. They <clears throat> are so gentle and kind, soft, but so very, very sad. Wex remembered how good it had felt to be carried by this man. After the cruel treatment the proud tree had received at the hands of the soldiers, being lifted onto this powerful soldier's shoulders had been like going back home on to the forest, comfortable and warm. How strange, Wex thought then. He doesn't even seem angry at what these soldiers have done to him. <clears throat> Wex wondered what wondering was jolted by the sound of metal against metal. What were the soldiers doing now? Suddenly he realized they were nailing the man's hands and feet to Wex's trunk. Wex could hardly believe this was happening. The man's the man's warm blood, warm blood ran from his wounds, soaking Wex's trunk. Wex felt sick. <coughs> the soldiers nailed a sign above the man's head. They then raised Wex and the man upward. They planted Wex firmly between the other two crosses. Wex whispered to the tree on his right. What does that sign say? The answer startled Wex. The sign says, the other tree whispered, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Wex didn't have time to think. The crowd was getting louder and noisier. They s shouted at Jesus and mocked him. If you are God, come down off the cross. Some yelled, he can save others, but he can't save himself, said others. Some king, where's your army? The voices were getting angrier and angrier. Son of God, where is your father now? God, Rex said. He was so startled, he almost shouted. This can't be God. Look at what he has left them to do to him. I can feel him struggling, his muscles trenching and crimping with the pain from his wounds. My trunk is soaked with his blood. I can hear his gasp when the pain gets bad. How can this be God? God is a spirit, is it he? <clears throat> As if in answer to his wondering, Wex heard Jesus speak what he said sent shivers up and down Wex's trunk. Father, forgive them. They do not know what they have done. Jesus 
voice was gentle and pleading. Rex was stunned. Don't know what they have done? Forgive them. Are you going mad with your pain? Nobody forgives people like this. Even trees don't forgive such terrible cruelty. All creatures know knows we have to hate our enemies, especially when they beat us and put us to death. Rex kept trying to reason with Jesus. After all, the man on the cross had every reason in the world to be angry. Listen, nobody ever forgives people like this, he said again. Nobody, of course, except maybe G. O D God. Suddenly, Wex realized who this man was. He began to feel weak. Wex began to sh shiver. Who, who did he call father? I have heard talk of a father in heaven and a son. Could this really be God? Can it be that this is truly the father's son? The very thought filled Wex with wonder. He, he's touching me. He carried me. He is nailed to me. Why would God want to be so close to me? <clears throat> Suddenly, Wex spoke to Jesus. I really haven't been very nice to nice tree. To be honest, I am probably the worst of all the trees in the forest. There are other far better trees that you could be nailed to. Why me, Jesus? Why me of all the good and loyal trees? West began to weep thick, sappy tears. I'm sorry that I have never been a tree your father could be proud to say he created. I'm really, really sorry. Sap ran from all parts of Rex's trunk. It coated the ground and mixed with the blood streaming from the wounds of Jesus. Rex heard Jesus speak once more. His voice sounded far away. Jesus said, Father, into your hands, I entrust my spirit. Then Rex felt the body of Jesus sag in a dead weight. A powerful sadness filled Rex's heart. It was still early afternoon. Heavy black storm clouds gathered in the sky. The clouds covered the sun, turning day into night. The rumble of thunder struck the earth with its angry voice. Bolts of lightning darted across the sky, point, pointing accusing fingers of light at all the people on the earth. The crowd was restless and fearful. They kept looking up at the sky, then at one another, then at Jesus. One by one, people began to drift away. Rex watched the crowd disappear. Robes pulled up over their heads. He thought they looked like thieves running from the scene of a crime. The violent wind pushed at their backs. Rain soaked through their clothes. Then the crowd was gone. Rex saw two silent figures below the cross. There was the woman Jesus had called mother. Beside her was the young man who had been his friend. Rex shook his trunk ever so gently. Je Jesus? He said. He called. There was no answer. Jesus! He called a little longer, louder. There was still no answer. No movement from the man on the cross. Rex's voice became uh, louder. Wake up! 
Wake up, Jesus. Now Wex was yelling. I said I'm sorry. Terrible. Tear. Tear. Terror grabbed at Rex's heart. He screamed, I'm sorry, please, Jesus, forgive me too, don't die. The fright, the figure on the cross remained absolutely still. How can this be, Rex said, you are God, you can't die. There is an old story about trees that are dying. The story goes like this. If a dying tree tells God he is sorry for the bad things he had done, if he wishes he had been better, God will give him new life from one of the tr tree's own seeds. Rex knew that he had been proud and ungrateful all his life. He wanted Jesus to hear how sorry he was, but Jesus was silent now. Wex thought to himself, he can't hear me. I've lost my chance to have new life. Wex wanted God to know that he was grateful for the honor of being chosen for this day. I want to thank God for cho coming so close to me, he prayed silently. I want to rise my branches in praise of his goodness. Oh, but I can't do that now. I have no branches left. I am naked and alone. It's too late. Rex turned very pale. It was indeed too late. The circumstances had just stopped. The Sincerian just stabbed Jesus inside, in the side with a long lynch. Blood and water ran from the wound. Jesus was dead. <clears throat> Rex remembered the story about dying trees. It is said that a tree hears music just before he dies. If the music is sad and very dis depressing, the tree will never have new life. But if the music is like angels singing praise to God, like an alleluia, the tree will have a new, greater growth, greater than the first. I wish Jesus could have heard me before he died, Rex said. If only he had known how much... I loved him. How much I am sorry I am for being proud. I never gave a thought to the needs of others. I wanted everything for myself. I thought I was the best, the first. I thought I was a self-made tree. If only I had thanked, thanked my creator if only I had loved my neighbor, I should have told Jesus sooner. But Jesus was gone now. His friends had come and carried his body away. The trees had watched them go. The wind voiced told Wax that Jesus had been buried in a bare old tomb carved out of rock. Guards were posted outside the entry to make sure Jesus stayed inside. That's pretty silly, said Rex. Where could a dead person go? As he stood watching, waiting for the music of his own death, Rex's sap continued to coat the ground. He kept thinking about how Jesus had been so cruelly treated. Wex found himself praying. He asked God the Father to take care of Jesus. The Son of God had suffered so much, and yet he had forgiven those who had hurt him. Wex didn't feel like hating anyone at anymore either
If I could have new growth, Rex whispered to himself, I would try to live and love others the way Jesus did. It was almost sun up the day after the Sabbath. Rex was very tired. He was ready to accept whatever God had planned for him. It was all up to his creator now. Rex listened. He thought he heard music, but it was so quiet he could barely hear it. <clears throat> the frightening storm of two days before had calmed now. <clears throat> Rex looked weakly at the sky. It was almost dawn. The wind voices were very faint, almost as still as sleep. A soft breeze began to blow. It was a different kind of breeze, warm and gentle. Gently, Rex began, became aware of a sound like tiny, high flutes. The sound grew nearer and nearer. Its trumpets was gray and uplifting. Rex lost. Last drop of sap began its journey to the ground. He was caught up in the beautiful sound of music. He almost forgot he was dying. A, flu a few flutes swarmed into thousands. Their music thrilled, danced around Rex. They suddenly, they sounded they surrounded him with their joyous hallelujahs. The animals that had kept watch hung their heads as the last drop of sap flew to the ground and disappeared. Rex was dead. It was the smallest chickmunk who first saw the sapling. Tiny and green, a newborn tree was growing where Rax's sap had mingled with Jesus, with the blood of Christ. Small branches and tender leaves reached towards the sun in wonder at the gift of new life. The end. So I like this book because it talks about how your pride can overpower you to think about yourself instead of Jesus. And it's something that we really need to think about at this time of Lent is what Jesus had to give up for everybody. So remember, pray for Jesus and remember the holy season that's coming up. And I, I pray that everyone stays safe and healthy in this unknown time. God bless. Amen.